Hi everybody, it's Franny, and today we're going to talk about whether you can use your classic car as a daily driver. For this discussion, we're going to consider a classic car to be anything that's 20 years or older. So we're going to use a 1986 Porsche 911 32 Carrera, a 1985 Ferrari 308 QV, and a 1995 Porsche 911 993 Carrera. So the first thing I want to talk to you about if you're considering using your classic car as a daily driver is safety. It has to be the most important thing we think of. And it's not just safety for you, but it's also safety for your passengers as well. Maybe you have a carpooler or you've got kids in the car. So the first thing I want to talk about for safety is the car itself, crumple zones and side impact. So the uh, two Porsches uh, have crumple zones in them as well and side impact the ferrari not so much now it does have side impact those were added when it was federalized but i don't know how this would crumple up in uh, an accident so certainly something to think about second thing would be bumpers these the two porsches have uh, five mile per hour bumpers this is not a five mile per hour bumper so just something to think about the next would be airbags. So of these three cars, only the 993 has airbags. Now it has both a passenger and a driver's airbag, but there are no airbags on the other cars. So just something to think about. Brakes, all three cars have disc brakes. So they're really good brakes, but it's only the 993 that has ABS. And that could be a thing, you know. Um, if, you, if you're driving in conditions where you think you'd really need it, it might be a consideration of something you need. All right, let's talk about traction control. None of these cars have traction control, and I think you'll find in the older cars, they just won't. You've got to move up into the 2000s before you find cars with real traction control. Headlights. Driving at night, it's super important that your headlights be bright and that they have a good throw, a good pattern. So the Ferrari has reasonably bright-ish headlights, but they just have a very low pattern because the car is so low. The uh, 993 and the 3.2 Carrera are okay. The, I've upgraded the lights on this car, but they also have fog lights as well, and that can be very helpful in bad weather as well. Just something to think about. Okay, so bad, talking about back, bad weather, let's talk about de-icers and defoggers and windshield wipers. You want to make sure that your car has very good functioning windshield wipers, and totally important. Um, and then defoggers and de-icers, you want to make sure your car has good air conditioning so it can clear the windows quickly and good vents up there to get that air up to, those win up to the windshield. And then the last thing I want to talk about is size. Something to realize that these cars are teeny compared to the cars that are on the road now. So you want to think about driving these things as though you're driving a motorcycle because you just, they, people just will not see you. So it's just, that's another, I think it's another thing to keep wholly in mind. Next thing I want to talk about is going to be reliability. So I picked the two older cars. This is an 85, the Ferrari, and this is an 86, this uh, Porsche 32 Carrera. So one of the things you need to think about with these older cars is rust. Um, both of these cars have rust protection built in when they were built, but still over the years, you know, they get pounded with rocks and things. So rust can be a big issue in, in these older classic cars. How about stop and go traffic? Can your car handle stop and go traffic? So the 32 Carrera does not like stop and go traffic. It's got um, an oil cooler in the front right wheel well here, but it needs air flowing over it. So stop and go not so great. The Ferrari has a pretty heavy clutch as well, so that can make it a little more difficult in stop and go traffic. Just something to consider, think about. Uh, what about temperature extremes? Can these cars handle uh, a really cold morning? Can they handle a 100 degree day? Is their cooling system up to the challenge? Both these cars are actually pretty good for that. So uh, just but something to consider. And then age. So these cars, like I said, are from the 80s, the mid 80s. And I don't know if I'd go much further back in time for a daily driver, just because of the things that are missing from cars back in that time. But um, you know, an older car, if it's, if it's 20, 30, 
40 years old, you've got a metal box full of 30 year old parts in it. So age is another important consideration. The next thing I want to talk about are creature comforts. We're going to start with the creature controls in the 993 here. Now this is the newest of our three cars. So I think something that's kind of important is good uh, heating and cooling controls on the car. So this car has a fairly sophisticated heating and cooling system on it. It's all integrated and works really, really well. Uh, next thing would be your radio. So in older cars, you've got a uh, decent radio possibly, but this is the original radio and it's a cassette deck and no connectability with your phone or anything like that. Uh, the seats in this car I want to talk about. These are very comfortable seats. And if you're going to be spending a lot of time, you just don't want uncomfortable seats in your classic car. A uh, car has power windows. Those can be very handy when you're driving around quite a bit. Um, really like that about this car. And then the also this car has a couple of other things. I mean it has cruise control and a couple of other things as well that modern cars would have. But it has power steering. And I want to talk about that because if you're in a in a tight garage or something backing out and uh, pulling the steering wheel can be kind of difficult. So that's a nice feature on this car. And then the last thing, my favorite feature, is that it's a manual transmission car and this one's actually a six speed. So it's a very good transmission on these cars and really easy to use. But if you're in a lot of stop and go traffic, you may, the manual transmission may be a thing for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Ferrari. Here in the Ferrari, the story is a little bit different. So our HVAC controls are not integrated, they're separate. And so you just want to kind of keep that in mind that you're going to have to operate them independently in this car. Our radio here is an aftermarket. It's a CD player, it works pretty well. So that's not really a problem at all. Um, our seats in this car are not quite as comfortable as they are in some of the, in like the 993 for instance. They're kind of tight. In fact, that the whole cabin in here is kind of tight. It's pretty small in here. There's not a lot of room to put extra things behind the seats and things like that. So that can be a, that can be an issue as well. Then the steering. So on this car, it has manual steering on it, no power steering. And the steering wheel is actually kind of small. So it is difficult to maneuver this thing in tight places, getting in and out of parking spaces and stuff like that. Uh, the stick shift on this car is nice. It's a five speed, a little difficult to get into second when it's cold, but that's okay. But the, but the only really downside is the clutch. It's just ugh, very stiff. And so in stop and go traffic, you're going to probably get a little fatigued by, you know, dealing with this. This is kind of a little bit difficult to work with the clutch. And the last thing is the visibility in the car. It's not terrible, but it's not as good as it is in some of the other cars. We have a smaller win um, little uh, window back here. And then on the sides, we have to look through the louvers and things. It's okay. It's probably what you would see in other cars of this era. But let's go take a look at the 3.2 Carrera. And so finally in the 3.2 Carrera here, we have the craziest HVAC system of any car I've ever seen. We've got our heat down here, and then we've got our air conditioning here in the center console. And then up here is sort of a diverter valve and fresh air controls. So you just gotta kinda get that in your head before you start out. Radio is once again an aftermarket radio, so you can kinda put in what you want, but this doesn't have any type of connectivity at all. As far as the transmission on this car goes, this is an older 915 transmission and and it can be a little bit it can be a little bit difficult to get into gear sometimes. So it's something to think about with older cars and older transmissions. They can be a little bit difficult to work with. The clutch on this car is is really not too bad. It's a lot it's it's a lot lighter than it is on say the Ferrari for instance. So that makes it pretty drivable steering. This car has manual steering. So just like the Ferrari, it's a little difficult to get out of tight, tight, really tight spaces. So once again, something to think about. As far as the, the usability of the cabin space, we have sort of have little teeny back seats back here. It's in the very a la 911, but you've got a nice parcel shelf back here. The top on the car 
back here is manual. So putting the top up and down is just something you kind of have to go through this bit of a process and then put the boot cover on it. So it's not like a modern car where you can just sort of hit a button and down the top goes. It's not like that. But uh, the seats are very comfortable in this car. They're, they're nice, they, they hold you in pretty well, which isn't too bad, but they, they just, even being older seats, they're very comfortable. Great visibility all around. So this car actually makes a pretty good daily driver. So another thing I'd like to talk about is the car's safety. So do you have a good place to park it at work, maybe covered parking? And then what about when you're driving home, maybe you stop at the uh, uh, dry cleaners or something or a grocery store, would you be okay parking the car in a parking lot or on the street and leaving it out of sight? that's kind of important and what about uh, personal belongings inside the car does the car have an alarm system and then finally is the car easy to steal you want to make sure that your car is not easy to steal as well just things we have to think about if we're going to use these every day the next thing I'd like to talk about is maintenance on these cars. Now these are older, so I find them actually a little easier to work on, but what about parts costs are, and, and the availability of those parts? Something to take a look at. What about the service interval? How often are you gonna need to work on the car? Also you're gonna be driving it more, so you're gonna need to do a little more work on it that way as well. Will you have a backup car? Let's say something breaks and it goes a couple of days, will you still be able to get to work? You kind of need a backup car if you're gonna try to rely on one of these as a daily driver. And then finally also, uh, as you drive it, you're gonna get door dings and you're gonna get you know rock chips and things. So, um, and you're gonna end up putting a bit of mileage on the car. All this can affect the valuation, and I don't know if that's an important issue for you, something else to think about. So another thing to consider is just how loud is your car? Are you going to be able to start it in the morning without upsetting all of your neighbors? Some final thoughts in driving a classic car daily would be, do you have a good toolkit and do you have a good emergency kit? You may have to stop on the way home and do something, a little repair or something on your car, which also speaks to, do you have sort of the mentality and the grace to not get upset with your car when it goes wrong and then to pull over and to just sort of get out your tools and start working on it. Um, this is something I think that's kind of important. Are you going to have the confidence to be able to drive the car every day as well? And also another thing would be, can you be late? Is your schedule so tight that if something went wrong with the car, that it would be a real problem if you were late? So these are some other things to think about, I think. Um, one final thing would be, it's kind of fun actually, I think, is that if you're stopped getting gas or somewhere, a lot of times people will notice your car because it's pretty different than all the other cars on the road and they'll want to strike up a conversation with you. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with answering a few questions and kind of talking to people? I find that to be um, super fun actually and really engaging. But it's just another thing you have to be aware of if you're going to drive one of these cars on a regular basis. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Did I miss anything? Is there some big, another big thing that I left out? Please let me know down below. So thank you so, so much for watching. And until next time, safe travels. Bye.